How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. Hope you guys are having a great day. So since starting my YouTube channel, I've had a couple of people reach out to me and ask me some React questions. So these are like beginners trying to learn React. And there's one common, uh, I guess, pitfall I see people doing, and that is using the add event listener and also using the use ref hook on their DOM elements to do things that you really don't need those features or functionality to do. The main thing I've seen a lot of time is that people are trying to dynamically add or toggle classes to DOM elements. So what they do is they use like a use ref hook on the element and then they get the element over here and then they can like dynamically add a class by doing like uh, ref dot current dot class list dot add or dot toggle. And really, if you're gonna be toggling classes or dynamically adding or removing classes, those class names should be on the class name property, okay? So that's one um, thing I'm seeing a lot of beginners kind of fall into. And I'll show you an alternative solution for that. And another one is using the add event listener inside the React code when there's already on-click listeners that you can use on React. So I don't know if people just aren't really reading the documentation before they dive into React, or they're not watching any of the tutorials, because I'm not really sure how you can fall through these pitfalls if you follow any type of basic tutorial about React, right? They, they don't tell you to use an add event listener when you're clicking DOM elements. They show you that there's a property called on click that you should be using. So let's just go ahead and dive into that. I wanna kind of explain an alternative solution instead of using those if you're using those on accident. Sorry about the uh, the echo. I'm in a new house, in a new room. This is my, uh, my messed up office. I have all my stuff laying around on the floor. Uh, that's my re little recording closet. I plan to like sound treat the walls and stuff so I can actually talk and not have it echo so much, but uh, I'm kind of busy with some other stuff. So this is what you're getting right now. So hopefully you enjoy it, but let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the code and see uh, what we can learn about what you should not do. All right, let's go ahead and step into my little closet office here. All right, so the first little snippet I wanna kind of share with you is this little React app that I set up. I've seen a couple of people do this and maybe it's like a combination of different things, but this is one thing I saw and this was like a big red flag to me of someone didn't actually read anything about React before they started using it. Um, but I mean, that's okay. React can kind of be overwhelming to learn, but this is kind of what they were doing. They had a button or they had something on the page and they wanted to basically make it so when you click it, the button changes colors. Uh, and what they were doing is they would actually do this when the component mouse they'd say add event listener dom content loaded and then they would query the page for a class of my button which would give you this button here and then they'd attach like a, an event listener or overwrite the on click method of that button to basically toggle a class on the button so if i go over to my chrome browser you can see this is kind of what's happening and if you are anywhere experienced with React, you'll realize that this is this is bad code. You shouldn't be doing this, right? And the reason is because there is an on-click event here that you can actually, or sorry, an on-click property that you can attach to your DOM elements that have that execute a function. So instead of doing all this uh, mess, in my opinion, what you could basically do is just make a function here called like const button clicked. And I'm just gonna go ahead and take this code out. And all this DOM content loaded could just go away. Um, and now we just need to refactor this line because also what a lot of beginners do is they sh you shouldn't be accessing the raw DOM elements in React. You should try to use as many properties as you can. And if for whatever reason you can't achieve the functionality you need, maybe you need like a mouse wheel listener or something, then that's when you need to start doing the lower level JavaScript um, DOM watchers or events. So again, when you click this, we just need to call the button clicked method now. And that will call this method, but this is gonna crash because we don't have access to the underlying DOM element here. So I, what I see a lot of people do as well is that like they'll do like a use ref. Um, I think it's just like ref of ref. And they'll say like const my button ref or whatever equals use ref. And they'll do this. And then inside of here, they do like this dot current dot class list. I think this is how you can do it. I haven't used refs in a while. So let's just see if this does something. I need to import use ref, I believe, from the state. So let's see if this works. Okay, so this also works. So basically when the React component loads, it's getting a reference to that DOM element, which is the button. And then we are saying when you click on the button, just go ahead and toggle the class 
on the DOM element. So dot current is how you grab the current DOM element. And this has access to all the you know underlying JavaScript DOM methods that you might need. So this is how I've also seen people do this. And again, this is like not the React way of doing this. This is like you're you've learned a lot of JavaScript and you're trying to hack JavaScript into React. So this is bad as well. So an alternative solution is you don't want to use the ref here. If all you need to do is toggle a class, add the class name property here, and probably use like a state variable called like, um, I don't know, is red could be, uh, I'll name it like is on, okay? That's the state variable called is on. I'm gonna default it to false. You know, I totally forget this is actually an array. Um, so I need to say set is on. So you bring in a use state hook you create a state variable, and what you basically do is just toggle the, the Boolean state, okay? So now that you have a Boolean that's going from true to false, you can use that Boolean to dynamically add class names here. So inside the class name property, what you can do is basically um, just do a string, and I can say if is on, I'm going to say red, Otherwise, do nothing. And there's other ways that you can kind of do this. I would bring in the class names library to help you build out like objects that are key value pairs to dynamically add class names. But this is a an entry level way of doing it. There's there's a lot of other ways you can kind of do this. Okay, so um, I have two class names here. So this one's overriding the first one. That's my bad. Let me just delete that second class name. And now I think this should work. So you can see that the button is turning red when I click it. So Hopefully that kind of helps you see what you shouldn't do in React and what you should be doing in React. Usually, if you're doing good React code, everything should be applied or dyna dynamically changed via these um, properties here, these attributes. Okay, so make sure you keep that in mind. Don't be using add event listeners in your React code. Don't be using use ref when you don't need it. Most of the time, you can actually change your DOM elements dynamically using the proper React convention. So if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Also, leave me a comment below if you have a different way you like doing this type of logic of dynamically adding classes or other pitfalls you might see newbie developers do. And then like always, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed watching this content.